What's up guys, it's Eli here with Night Jiu Jitsu. I'm here with my buddy Matt and uh, we're at my alma mater at Three Rivers Martial Arts. I just did a seminar yesterday. This is nothing pertaining to that, but I just thought I would tell you. Uh, I wanted to show uh, a few things because sometimes there's a little bit of um, confusion between uh, different elements of different uh, strangles and chokes and submissions and whatever and gi versus no gi. And some of them have direct translations, some of them have modifications that make them more suitable for gi or no gi environments, and these are some that I think kind of stand out, at least as examples of those. There's tons of these, but I'm going to show three as examples. Uh, the first one I want to start with, because um, this is one of my favorites, is the Bravo choke versus the Darce choke. Uh, these, at some points uh, in, in history, were kind of used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. Um, um, what the Bravo choke is pretty good for is if I'm having a uh, hard time establishing the underhook on this side and I open his uh, collar and I shoot in nice and deep this way. So I'm going to shoot in really deep. I'm still trying to keep my, my hips heavy into him so that he doesn't like ball up too easily and he also doesn't win his underhook. So he's elected to frame against me. So I'm going to I'm going to lean into the frame to get him really committed to that. I'm going to take this hand and I want to grab about midway up the sleeve here. I want to get inside that little crease there. If he's got a judo jacket on, that's fantastic because you got a better grip. So I'm going to lean heavy into it here. And then as I pull back, I pop that arm across, right? So we're here. I get my first grip established. I lean into it here. I pop that across this way. Now, once um, I'm, I've already got this other hand fed deep inside, I'm going to try to tuck his arm in a way that allows me to get my shoulder into his ear. So as I get my shoulder into his ear, if sometimes right here, you'll get the, the tap just off of that. But if you need the extra pressure, you can go behind the head, almost like the Dars finish. And I'm going to push his head in with my tricep and I'm going to finish out and I'm gonna crank up that way to get that Bravo choke like that. So again, this is the Bravo choke where I'm going under his neck, his arm comes across here, so it's very similar to the darts. The where this uh, differentiates though, is if I were going for the darts instead, whenever I get here, I'm gonna pull his head down and I'm gonna shoot my hand all the way past. So if he doesn't have the collar, this, if this were a no gi environment, or even with it, because it works either way, um, I'm gonna shoot this as deep as I can. My ear is down here on his rib. And then as I go here, I'm gonna connect the forearm first and then I'm gonna ratchet in until I can get here. I'm gonna drive my hips inside and then I'm gonna finish that Dars choke like that. So again, the Dars being more of the, the no gi in this situation. But again, anything you do no gi, you can also do in the gi. It just doesn't work the other way around. Like not everything you do in the gi can you translate to no gi. But these are some nice little corollaries. So the Dars and the Bravo. Next is, uh, I wanna look at the Ezekiel choke, right? So the Ezekiel can happen from several different places. Uh, I think that one of the best places to establish it from is from the mount. And Ezekiel is uh, famous because of a guy named Ezekiel in Brazil. He was a judo player a long time ago. And um, not to belittle it, he's a legend. But uh, basically what I'm gonna try to do, with modern gis, they're so tapered at the wrists that you're lucky to get three fingers inside, right? So you can go all four, you can go three. I wouldn't go any less than two, that seems dangerous. But whatever it is, once I get out here underneath, like I want to get a nice deep uh, underhook this way, um, I need to keep his chin exposed. So a couple different ways I can do that. I can like raise the drawbridge like this, and that kind of cranks his head over here this way. Um, or I can use my chin and go to this kind of chin to his temple uh, control like that. And that kind of keeps his head neutral. So um, this also keeps him from looking at what I'm doing underneath here. So what I want to look to do is I want to take my free hand and I want to grab the fingers inside and then I'm gonna slide both of these hands over across his neck. At that point here, I'm gonna straighten, like I'm gonna do a one-handed push-up, and I wanna drive in, and then there's gonna be the Ezekiel choke. Essentially what's happening is here, and I'm pressing in this way. You can use an open hand, you can use a cat paw, or you can use a fist. And that is all kind of contingent on the opening that you have between his jaw and his collarbone. So whatever that space is that needs filled, whatever is appropriate to fill it. So one more time in the Ezekiel, I get here like this, I, uh, I keep his head kind of neutral position and then I go here. Now, I don't just go here because look at that gap, right? Whenever I go to actually execute it, I slide both arms over and across so that the connection is touching the side of his neck. And then sometimes you'll press in and it's clean on the carotid and other times it's gonna be more tracheal. Either way, if he taps, he taps, right? So that, how do we do that no gi then? Um, you can do kind of a folded arm version, but the, the, the version I like a lot uh, in the no gi uh, section of it is the punch choke. Right now, the punch choke uh, from here can do it can come a, a few different ways. I'm going to use the same kind of like uh, chin to his temple kind of control like this to keep his head neutral position. And instead of grabbing my wrist any kind of way first and then inserting it, I'm going to insert and then grab. So I'm going to make my little cat paw here again, and I want to punch all the way through and across so that I feel the this karate chop portion of my hand here on his 
carotid, right? When I feel that, I'm gonna grab, my bottom arm's gonna grab my forearm here, and then I'm gonna punch the rest of the way. So again, this time, I'm coming on the outside, and I'm closing that space right there. There's obviously no gi necessary for this variation of this punch choke, uh, as opposed to the Ezekiel choke, where I can come in and, and hold the sleeve here. One may be more powerful than the other. I would tend to say the Ezekiel with the Gi is gonna be more powerful, but the punch choke is also very effective, if not for a submission itself, but also to get a good reaction off of him to maybe raise his arms, and then you can start chaining and combining together threats based on his reaction, right? The neck ties now, right? So um, the, this one uh, is interesting because we have the Peruvian necktie, which is one of the most famous neckties. And we'll look at that, that's the no gi version. And then we'll also look at the corollary using the gi. Um, and I like to use the skirt portion personally on this. And I, whenever I saw Yarden, I believe her last name was pronounced Jerby. She's an Israeli uh, judoka. And she was excellent at this. And she's the one who really like changed my mind about it like years back. So uh, first, let's watch switch sides if you don't mind. Um, what I want to look to do, if I'm gonna go for the uh, Peruvian necktie, and this would be the no gi version, right? Is where I'm gonna shoot underneath and across. So I'm gonna start it similar to how I would start a uh, Darce or an Anaconda, depending on the, the angle that I'm coming in at. But generally it's gonna be more toward his trap. And I wanna get a, a combo grip underneath. Now, once again, it's uh, I don't wanna be too um, necessarily prescriptive about this. I could do it just from here, almost like a guillotine grip. You could also do it with an S grip here. You can also do it with uh, a grip this way, where you're gable gripping the two hands, almost like you're going to do a dars choke. Uh, this is a pretty powerful grip here. So what I'm doing is I'm inserting, I'm inserting my hand by his lat, coming out by his neck. I want to go palm to palm over here. You can even go S grip over here, depending on the wrist flexibility. And once you get here, now I'm going to start to drive uh, toward his butt. Right? What the reaction is gonna be, because I'm trying to drive him toward his butt, is he, he typically is gonna drive back and oppose my, my energy that way. So I'm gonna step over his head here this way, and then as I start to hop up to my leg, I step over his body this way here. And now from there, I push my heels away, and I pull through his neck, and it's a really nasty kind of necktie. Try to be as loose as possible, because like, I have to talk while I'm doing this, I don't want his head to pop off. But once we get there, whether it's an S grip or whether it's a palm to palm grip, and my legs are around, and I'm pulling through, that hole here like this. So one more time on this Peruvian necktie here. I get my hands together over on the side of his neck here, either gable or S grip. I wanna to start to post my leg and drive forward. That leg is gonna go hamstring to the back of his head. Once that happens, I hop up one, step over two, over his back. I press my heels away and I pull through his neck that direction. To make matters even worse, when we look at the gi version of this, uh, this choke, it's really nasty. So the way this is gonna work though, is if Matt's turtled up here like this, I at some point have removed my lapel, or I'm sorry, my skirt from my gi, and, uh, and from here, I wanna open, and I'm gonna punch this through by his neck, here. When I punch it through, I'm actually passing it to my other hand that's coming in by his lap. Right? So once we get that here this way, and um, I'm gonna start to drive again, just like I did before, I start to drive in, and I step over the head, and one more time, I sit down and out, and now it's just a matter of pulling on both sides of the gi here. That's way sharper, way, way uh, more painful and miserable than, than the no gi version with just that Peruvian necktie. So um, that here where I'm sliding this through, passing it to my other hand, stepping over the head here. I like to grab the top side of the gi as well whenever we finish the strangle and that other leg over the back. So again, I'm strangling him with this part of the material straight through his neck. It's really miserable. Um, but those are closely related because they're entering similar ways. They're still collecting up in that kind of kata region here, right? Uh, and so it's, it has elements of a head and arm choke, has elements of a guillotine, and it has the assistance of the legs over the back and neck. So it's a miserable choke. Those three here, I think if, obviously those are not the only three that this happens. There's dozens and hundreds of these kind of submissions where you have a gi variation and you have a no gi variation. And these are, uh, I think, good illustrations of how those things kind of work and complement each other. So I don't want to necessarily try to force a no-gi variation when I have the weapon of the gi, if that's what's within the confines of the rules. Um, and then likewise, I don't want to try to modify, make too many modifications to match my gi game to my no-gi. Sometimes just little slight modifications can get the job done. If you guys have any others of these that you have in mind that, that work similar, and you can think of these right off the top of your head, like I wonder about this one and this one because they're closely related, gi and no-gi, then drop a comment, remind me about them, and uh, I'll try to include those in another video like this in the future. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, Matt. Thank you, brother. And keep watching that Jiu-Jitsu channel, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that stuff.